Now, at this point, pretty much all we've done throughout the course is we have learned HTML, we have learned cascading style sheets, and we have learned JavaScript. Then all of a sudden, we took these HTML pages that we created initially, and we started putting code, server-side code in it. So you end up with these PHP files that have HTML here, and then, oops, here comes a piece of H PHP code. And then a little bit more of HTML down the road, and oops, here comes another piece of PHP. Right? That's what we have ended up with. And the problem with that is, as the project gets bigger and bigger, then more developers start coming into the into the plate, into the project. And then that's when the whole project becomes a really a, a maintenance nightmare. Because I don't know if you guys can see this, but the way that the website is presented, the way that the business rules are laid out, the way that the connection to the database is set up, everything is inside one file, the PHP file. So if you start getting a whole bunch of developers, new developers in the team, pretty soon you're going to start stepping onto each other's toes. You're going to have a team of graphical designers that are going to start doing all kinds of modifications on the HTML and the styles and all that stuff. And then you're going to have another bunch of developers that are going to be specialized on the business rules. Right? And they're going to start modifying a whole bunch of PHP code in the same file as the file that the, uh, the, the uh, designers... Keep it quiet, please, guys. The same, the same files that the designers are working on. So basically, what we're creating is a total maintenance nightmare. Okay. So the idea is, the idea is, to be able to extract the different concerns in the project and put them in separate places. And this is a concept. This is a concept that came about. I thought I had this somewhere in here. This is a concept that came about a long time ago. And it's called the model view controller pattern. Okay? And if you guys Google on it, You will see that Wikipedia, for instance, says that the model view controller is a software architecture. And a, and a software architecture is nothing else than like the picture of how a software system is laid out. Basically, what are the different components of the system and how they relate to each other. That's the software architecture. So MVC controller is a software architecture currently considered an architectural pattern. And it's an architectural pattern because it always has the same shape. It always has the same components. No matter in what programming language you implement it, an MVC pattern will always have the same shape. Okay? That's why it's called an architectural pattern. Used in software engineering. And yes, that's what we're doing. We're supposed to be software engineers developing a web application. Now, the pattern isolates domain logic. Can anybody tell me what is the domain logic in a web application? All right. Your website is about Colombian dishes. What do you think are the domain entities in your application? Users is one. Dishes, or well actually recipes. So if you think about your website, and I ask you this 
three, four weeks ago. I ask you, please put in your problem statement, right after your problem statement, put a list of your main entities. Who do you think are your main the the key important guys in your system? System. These are it. These are my main entities. What do you think? An online timesheet system. What do you think? Is employee going to be an entity? You bet. His users is my employees. These are the guys that are going to be using the system. I need to identify them who they are. What about timesheets? <laughs> the title of my web application has the word timesheet. Does that give you a clue? Definitely. It's a main entity. Okay? These guys, all these guys that are the main entities in your web app are part of your domain logic. Okay? An employee has a first name, has an email address, has a password. It's supposed to represent the user in, 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 uh, in, a, in a corporate environment, blah, 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 blah. A time ship is supposed to keep track of time Monday through Sunday and you have a whole bunch of rules. You cannot you cannot submit more than sixteen hours a day. You cannot submit more than sixty five hours a week of work time. Those are business rules. And those business rules should be put with the entities that make up your domain logic okay so the pattern the model view controller pattern isolates the domain logic the application logic for the user from the user interface can anybody tell me what is the user interface in what you're building it's a website it's HTML it will get rendered in a browser. HTML is a special kind of user interface. Is that the only one? No. You could build an application for one of these and it's going to be different. This is a mobile device. And it, even though it accepts HTML like any other browser, a mobile application has a different interface. Okay? What about XML? XML is a totally different animal. XML does not have any display to it, any formatting to it. It's just data. But that's another possible interface user interface and so is web services web services is another totally different interface that is being used among different systems that are built on different architectures and different platforms that they're not supposed to be able to talk to each other except through web services okay so there's a whole bunch of user interfaces JSON is another one. JavaScript object notation is another type of user interface. Okay? So the idea is take this PHP file that has HTML, that has PHP code rel uh, uh, relevant to the domain and the business rules, and take all that stuff that it's all mingled together into one file and start putting it in its own place. So this pattern is going to allow us to extract out of this mess that we have created, which is, this is by the way that websites were built back in the 90s. It was called spaghetti code. Everything was put all together. That's not the way that websites are built today, believe me. Okay? So what we want to do is do it the way that it's done in this century. Okay? And 
it should follow this pattern the model view controller pattern so we're going to get to see what that means and what that involves uh, basically it allows you it, it permits independent development I already said that so you can have a, a team of designers independent from a team of developers for, for the business rules independent from a team of database designers etc etc it allows you to uh, do independent testing it allows you to maintain it much easier because you are separating concerns what concerns to the business rules should be totally independent what concerns to the user interface totally different one shouldn't care about the other okay so basically a model view controller is a pattern and this is the pattern very simple it's a system that has three parts to it it has the model it has the view and it has the controller and each one has its own responsibilities okay the database is out of the picture here in fact the database can be an XML or a relational database management system or any other type of storage it could be a flat file system it could be a it could be an object relational database system doesn't matter but the database is out of the picture here we are going to build we are going to build our third version third and last version of the website using an MVC pattern okay now before I dive more into what the MVC pattern is I want you guys to decide upon two things one of two things you can read more about it um, you know it was first described in 1979 but not until recently uh, thanks to Martin Fowler one of the um, really important guys in this computer science field he he's the one who said you know what this is a pattern and and I've seen it in most web applications when you want to build a well-maintained uh, scalable web applications I've seen that they have they tend to have this pattern and so he created it as a pattern he patented it as a pattern and it's now called the MVC pattern the model view controller pattern okay I just want you to see all the different implementations that are out there of this pattern and almost every language has it and almost every uh, software foundation or software company has built it and I'm going to go very quickly through these for instance does anybody know what action script is? Action script. Action script is the MVC pattern implementation of Flex. I'm sorry, Flash. So you want to build an MVC pattern Flash application? You use Action script. It's Adobe, it's proprietary. Hey, they said we're going to provide the functionality. You like Flash? All right, I'm going to provide you a framework that is going to have the MVC pattern that will allow you to produce a Flash application much faster, more scalable, more maintainable. And we're going to call it Action Script. Is anybody familiar with this one? C++. This plus plus is also its own MVC pattern implement. You can do an MVC pattern in C plus plus. Okay. In fact, it's called Pure MVC. I have I don't know the other two, but I've I've heard about Pure MVC. Anybody familiar with Cold Fusion? 
from Micromedia, which got later on bought by Adobe. That's another technology. And, and I remember maybe two or three weeks ago, I went through all the chapters in the book. Remember, I said, we're not going to cover this, we're not going to cover it, but this is what it is. Blah, 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 all that stuff. All these server-side uh, technologies and all the client-side technologies. Well, Cold Fusion is one of the server-side technologies. And it's used to build websites. And guess what? You like Cold Fusion? Don't worry. I'll give you a, an MVC pattern framework that allows that would allow you to develop in Cold Fusion fast, scalable, maintainable. It's called Coldbox. Right here. Cold, I've heard about Coldbox and Fusebox. I'm sorry, Fusebox. I've heard about Fusebox. I don't know the other ones. There's so many. Look at this. Flex. Flex it has its own. Pure MVC. Has anybody heard about Groovy? Groovy. <laughs> Groovy is its own language. Its own programming language. You like programming in Groovy? Don't worry. I'm going to give you an MVC pattern framework that will allow you to do really good maintainable all that stuff. It's called Grails. In fact, Ruby came first with the name Rails. And then Groovy said, you know what? We've got to do something similar to Ruby. But for Groovy. And it's got to be like Rails. Because it's very similar. I mean, the pattern is the same, except that the language changes. So they say, okay, let's do Rails, but we've got to call it different. Let's call it Grails. So Groovy on Rails is Grails. Okay? And that's the framework. What about... Have you guys heard about this programming language? Java. Look at all the MVC pattern implementations in Java. In fact, I can name you two, the most common ones that you know you're going to encounter when you graduate and find a job. These two. Struts and Spring. Spring is the MVC pattern implementation in Java. Okay? It's a bunch of libraries built in Java that will allow you to create a web application, scalable, maintainable, that holds that pattern. Okay? And I can go through each one of JavaScript has its own. .NET. Anybody heard of .NET? Microsoft, they have their own. It's called ASP. ASP.NET, excuse me. Anybody heard of PHP? Look at this. PHP has Cake PHP. The, mo the two most common ones in PHP that I heard a lot is Cake PHP and Zen Framework. Python. Python has its own. Django is very common. Ruby. Ruby on Rails. Smalltalk. Anybody heard of Smalltalk? This programming language was one of the first object-oriented programming language. It's probably just as old, if not even older, than C++. One of the first pro uh, object-oriented programming languages. Okay, They have their own MVC pattern framework. XML has it. It's called X, X forms. Anyway, you get the point. So, originally, from the syllables, I told you, we're going to do Ruby on Rails. Ruby is an object-oriented programming language, and Rails is the framework built on Ruby that provides you the MVC pattern. Okay? Then... I said, well, maybe you guys don't want to learn a new language. Maybe you guys want to stay in PHP. PHP has its own MVC pattern. It's called Cake PHP. And in fact, if you take a look at the definition for Cake PHP, it says it's a web application framework modeled after the concept of Ruby on Rails. So they are extremely, extremely similar. Except that one is done in Ruby 
and the other one is done in PHP. The way that you've been building it, which is a whole bunch of spaghetti code, that's gone. You gotta start pulling out your concerns out of your uh, PHP website and put them separately. And that's gonna be the case whether you do it in Ruby or in PHP. So what I need you guys to do is to vote on whether you want to go Ruby or you want to go PHP. Whether you want to go Rails or you want to go Cake PHP. I have provided online on Blackboard under my course content I have provided and I don't know if you you guys have noticed that or not some students tell me oh really you were sharing those books I didn't know that did anybody knew that I was sharing PHP and my sequel book no yes you can yes you can error Okay, I just recently republished them. <laughs> See, I don't know that you guys don't get it until I tell until somebody comes over and says, "You know what? I can't download it." I'm like, "I can." And I click on it and I could. Well, it turns out that it was on my local library whatever and you guys couldn't get it. But now it's publicly available. Right. So if you guys run into problems for next week turning in your final version of your PHP, look at that book. That book has really, really good examples. Like the example that I showed you guys last week of registration. Have you guys seen it? The login, the registration, the forgot my password and all that stuff. I mean, that's a, that's a really good project because right there it's giving you the code on how to do registration, how to do login, how to do forgot my password. Okay? That book is full of samples that you can, of other functional requirements that you can look at. Uh, and the next link right here is the source code. This is the source code of that book. So you don't have to type this stuff all over again, right? That's the whole idea. Well, the next two books that I'm sharing with you guys, one is the beginning cake PHP from novice to professional. Okay? And the next one is the beginning rails from novice to professional. Okay. Found it. Can everybody see that? If we were to develop our current web application following an MVC pattern, doesn't matter in what language, okay? And we were to take a look at a picture of what that web application would look like, this would be it. So notice, over here, we have through Hypertext Transfer Protocol, a request. Yeah, that means the browser, right? Right now, currently, on your, webs on your web application, who receives that request? Who? Apache. Apache receives that HTTP request and takes a look at the URL. Oop! Dot PHP. I know what to do. And delegates that request to PHP, the dynamic link library that you guys install and that we had to spend a whole week trying to figure out how to install it correctly. Right? Then that library says, oh, okay, I know where to find that pro that document, and loads it up into memory and starts debugging it, or translating it, not debugging it, translating it, okay? And then it solves the whole uh, translation, execution, and eventually it's going to send back the result, which should be HTML, right? The result should be HTML and, and content back to... Apache and Apache say, okay, here it is, and sends it back. 
Well, now, having a web application with the controller, with the view control, model view controller uh, pattern, you guys are not going to have um, PHP alone be the one handling the request. Now, there's going to be a controller. And a controller is a specialized guy. It's a PHP class. Okay? It's a PHP cl uh, uh, class that will have a special function. And in fact, if you guys think about it from your wiki perspective, every functional requirement will have its own controller. Oh, I want to... I want to provide a list of recipes. Well, guess what? In the URL, somewhere in the URL, in addition to the .php, you are providing an indicative that you are going to request a list of recipes. And there's going to be one and only one controller that will say, hey, I know how to do that. And it's going to grab that request and it's going to say, I know exactly who can help me fill up this request. And it will know who in the model side. And remember, this pattern has three sides to it, three components to it. It knows who in the model side will be able to help fill up that request. It will say, wait a minute, this is recipes a list of recipes. There is a guy that is an expert on recipes. It's called the recipe manager. So I'm going to call him and ask him to help me. And the controller is going to handle, it's going to um, delegate the request to the specific abstract, what it's called the abstract class. In this case, it will be the recipe class that knows exactly how to CRUD a recipe. What is a CRUD? Create, read, update, and delete. Those are the four major functions that you can do on any database or any system. Create it, out of scratch, right? Read it into memory from some storage, update it, take some pieces of it and change it, update it, and delete it. So that model, that abstract class, knows how to do the CRUDs on that. And in fact, you know what? It knows how to connect to the database and do the create, the read, and update, and the delete in the database. And typically, there is a one-to-one -one between the abstract class and the tables in your database. Or oh, you have a user's table in the database, and this is something you guys got to learn from whatever you're doing right now, the way that you lay out your database. You have a user's table, most probably you're going to have a user's model class. Or oh, you have a recipes table, most probably you're going to have a recipes model class. Or you have a Teams table, you're probably going to have a Teams model class. Okay? And then once that model class gets you the list of recipe, whatever it is that you're asking to do, it will know what view to send it. And the view can be anything. It could be HTML, XML, web service, whatever. In this case, it's being represented by XML data. So the models are going to be producing XML data. And that XML data will be transformed through XSL into HTML. And that's going to be the output. Is that the only way of doing it? No. There are a million ways of doing it. But this is the pattern that we're going to be following. Okay? So the controller is the guy in charge of delegating that functional requirement. It knows what model can help it and the model knows what view is going to um, eventually give the, the result. 
and then at the end you get the HTTP response which is what the browser gets.